what is a moment? Before we talk about moments, let's first review where we've just come from in the previous chapter. So particle equilibrium. Here is a solid body sitting in an empty space. In the bodies that we saw, all of the forces acting on the body, the line of action of those forces met at a point. And so what we could do was take that point, treat the body as just a point, put all of the forces acting at that point and do the vector sum and the X and Y and Z, set them all equal to zero and we could solve for all the unknown forces. We also talked about how, how that point didn't have to be the center of mass of the body and you could still do particle equilibrium. So now we want to move on to the case where the line of action of the forces don't necessarily meet at a point. Okay, so first of all, coming back to this, this is the, the particle equilibrium case. Th this and this. For those two cases, what, what's happening to the body? What, what is the body resisting? Because again, it's in it's in static equilibrium, but something's still happening. What is what is the body resisting? If you think about it, the it's resisting like being pressed or being stretched. It's like a pure press or stretch. Even even in this case as well. In this case, though, again, this is still this is still equilibrium in particular static equilibrium where, you know, you could have equilibrium in, at a constant velocity, but we're talking about static equilibrium where the body, the body isn't moving. So in this case, the body is also going to be resisting spinning, some sort of like, like a spinning motion or, or a twisting motion or some combination of both of those. So in other words, you could have like, a bar here okay you could you could you could spin it like about this axis you could spin it about this axis or you could twist it about this axis you see so for the for the case where the forces aren't meeting at a point that the body is resisting some sort of uh, like a like a like a spinning action twisting action or some combination of that of, of those and, and so what that, what that tells you is that to proceed forward in engineering mechanics, we're going to need more than just the idea of strictly a, a force. We're also going to need some sort of measure for the tendency of a force to cause rotation. That, that's what moments are all about. And so, and so to think about this, if you have, if, if you have a, if you have two wrenches, one's a longer wrench and one's a shorter wrench, you got you, you've got the wrench on a bolt. Let's say you're applying the exact same force on both wrenches, but the longer wrench, it, it's a different, it's, it's a different force though. It's like, it's technically the same force, but it's, it's, it's still, it's, it is different though, right? You, you need a way to quantify, well, well. Yeah, I'm applying the same force, but it's it's definitely a lot more. It, the 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 effect of this force on the bolt is is more significant with the longer wrench. So you see that that's why you that's why we need moments. That that the moment is there to quantify that difference. Okay, so again, a moment is a measure of the tendency of a force to cause rotation. Specifically, the tendency of a force to cause rotation about a point about a point so really really sear that into your head it's about a point not an axis and i'll clarify i'll clarify the details of this as we go on in the, in the video and in, and in the next upcoming videos but it's we're talking about a, it's about a point i forgot that as i went through engineering mechanics i always thought about it as an axis it's a, it's a point and it and it, it's any it's any point you want so i could say I could take this force here and say, what is the tendency of this force to cause rotation about the center of mass? 
what is the tendency or, or what is the tendency of this force to cause rotation about here? And, and, and which one you choose depends on the application. Okay, and in a few minutes, I'm going to give you more specifics about the idea of what exactly a moment is. But first, I, I, I want to I come back to, to this. So this was particle equilibrium, but the point is not at the center of mass. I, 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 don't, I don't like how this is classified as, as a particle equilibrium problem, because to me, it's way too close to be associating with non particle equal equilibrium here here's what i mean so so th this this point is the center of mass this is true particle equilibrium and to show you that one thing that you can do and we'll and we'll talk about this later in this chapter but if you wanted to simplify this force system since since they all meet at a point all these forces the lines of action you could take all these forces put them at this point, like on the, like leave the body here, but like you leave this point, like you, you, you just bring all these vectors to the point on the body, do a vector sum on them. You'll get a resultant vector. And then you just, er you just, you just erase all the forces and put that resultant vector at the point. That's an equivalent force system that has an equivalent effect as like all of these forces that 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 resultant vector acting at that point has the same effect as what all these forces are doing as a as a whole that's valid you can do that so this is the center of mass you'd have a resultant vector okay well for for particle equilibrium the 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 magnitude of this vector is is zero and similarly you could do the same the same idea here bring all the forces to this point, do a vector sum, and then, and then you get, you know, another resultant vector. But for, for particle equilibrium, the, the magnitude of this vector is zero. So at, in, at the end of the day, nothing, the body isn't doing anything. It's in equilibrium. It's not, it's in static equilibrium. It's not moving. Okay. But let, let's say let's say that some of the forces weren't equal to zero. Let's say you actually get get a vector, an actual vector here, a vector that has a has magnitude and in, in direction. Well, now you don't have an equilibrium case. It's a it's a dynamics case because the sum of the forces don't equal to zero. But for the dynamics case in this situation, you can st it, you still are dealing with a particle. You can still just you you come you can treat the the body as a particle. Here's the force. F is equal to M A. You know, all of the it's a particle. All of the mass of the body is concentrated at this point. You, you know, you do your, your mass times acceleration analysis with the force using this point. So it's like a that's what I think about. So it's a true particle particle problem. Part, particle equilibrium if the sum of the forces are zero. The dynamics of a particle if they're not. In in this case, however. Let's say let's say you you end up with a um, a, a, a vector, so it's not sta it's not equilibrium anymore. But but for the, so it's a dynamics problem. But it now it's not a it's not a particle problem though. For the dynamics case, it's not a particle problem. Why? Because what you're going to need to do is let's say this is the center of mass. You're going to want to take this resultant vector and find out what is its tendency to cause rotation about the center of mass because that's going to be a measure of how much this is going to spin. So you, like, that's the idea of a, when you have a particle, there's no spinning like that going on. So you, you can't treat, you couldn't treat this as a particle because then what about all the spinning and the twisting? And so that's the idea of, well, I'm going to show you in a second, how do we calculate the tendency of this force to cause rotation about this point? How can we measure that? And before I show you that, I want to talk about one last thing. If, if, if you notice, based on the definition of a moment, every single force has a moment. Like, because, like, this force, it, it, or, as long as there's points that exist away from the force, then you can calculate the moment of the force about that point. Like, the only, the only time a, a force doesn't have a moment about a point is if the point is on the line of action of the force. 
But this force here has a moment about this point. But the idea is the, the way we pro, we're progressing through engineering mechanics, we kind of look at it. We look at each situation through the eyes of a, of a free body diagram. And so when you have a, a particle equilibrium problem, you're, kind, you're thinking of like a problem where those forces don't have moments because all, because the, the, the point of interest in a lot of cases is on the line of action of the forces. So they don't have any moments. Like none of these, none of these forces have a moment about this point. So you think about them as like not having moments. Okay. So again, now you can see that to proceed forward in, in engineering mechanics, we need this idea of a measure of, of, of a moment, the tendency of a force to cause rotation. How do you calculate a moment? I'm just giving you a big picture overview here. We're going to get in the next video, we're going to get into the, the, the fine details of this. But I just want to give you an overview. So remember, you're, you're, we're count that a moment is the, a measure of the tendency of a force to cause rotation about a point. About a point. We're going to start in 3D. I don't, I don't like starting in 2D. I think it makes it more confusing. 3D is the most general case. Again, a, the tendency of a force to cause rotation about a point. That's what a moment is. So you've got your force. And then you pick a point. Depending on the application, you pick a point. Let's say we're picking point O here. So what is the tendency of this force F to cause rotation about point O? What you do is you take a position vector from, and you draw it from point O to anywhere along the line of action of the force. They draw it to the tail here, but it can be anywhere. So you could use this vector. You could use this vector going from point O to the force. It doesn't have to be perpendicular. Going from point O to the force, the line of action of the force. Then, then the, the moment of the force about point O is just R cross F. That's the cross product. I'm going to talk about this in detail. The result that you get, this, this, the result of this is, a, is another vector. So a vector has a magnitude and direction. The direction of that, res, that vector that's that's the moment axis. There's where that axis comes into play. You are rotating. It, it is it is F F is causing rotation about an axis, but you, you but you you're still thinking about you're still calculating it about a point though. But it does result in it's a it's a net rotation that's trying uh, causing about the moment axis. The the magnitude of this vector is that like measure of the the moment. The higher the magnitude, the more tendency to cause rotation. And we'll, and we'll see that this, this vector, this at moment axis is perpendicular to the plane that contains R and F. See? And we're going to talk about all this. We're going to talk about the, the right-hand rule, how you calculate the direction of the spin. We're going to go through all that. Now, la now la last thing is, so the 2D case. All the 2D case is, is, so you're in a single plane. It could be any plane, but let's say the XY plane. You got, you know, there's, there's a force vector. You take your position vector. In, in, in 2D, you can see that the moment axis is always the Z axis. And so that's what I don't like about starting in 2D and getting, and, and getting so used to 2D. You forget about the moment axis. You forget about this, this concept of the cross product. Okay, so now you understand what moments are, why we need them, what they're used for. In the next video, we're going to get into more detail on how exactly we calculate moments. Because again, that's what, because that's what we want to do in the, in the upcoming example problems. We want to just calculate the moments of forces or, or the, the net moments of a bunch of forces for all kinds of different situations. We want to really get used to calculating a moment. Okay, see y'all in the next video.